Ho, ho, ho. Pope Francis and his little Santa's helper, his elf James Martin, have taken the world by storm, moving the Overton window on a very controversial topic, which is the blessing of irregular unions, and in particular, articulating the blessing of same-sex couples. It is apparently so far the Christmas gift, allegedly, that keeps on giving, and it's all the talk globally in every single newspaper in every single country. This is enormous news, and already we've seen so many bishops, almost the entire continent, some people are saying, of Africa, the Catholic bishops, rejecting and not and saying we will not implement it. A number of bishops. So today we're going to look at, again, what the document says, because there's a lot of misinformation about that. So I'm just going to read it to you on the screen. I'm going to tell you which bishops are opposing this, and I'm going to give you some message of Christmas hope on how good it is to be a Catholic, how ultimately this will fail, how our Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Lord and Savior, already has a plan to get us out of this, and maybe some examples from the past. So I'm going to throw up on the screen, of course, right here, here's, here's Francis, the Jesuit, and his friend, James Martin. And here we got um, James Martin himself. He called up um, a couple he knew right away. He's like, hey, let's do that blessing. Let's get blessed, y'all. Come on up to the church. So there they are holding hands, and James Martin says, Dear friends, I was honored to bless my friends Jason and Damien this morning in our Jesuit residence according to the new guidelines laid out by the Vatican for same-sex couples. But before this, I've been blessed by their friendship and support. That's James Martin. By the way, if you're new today, make sure you like the video. Maybe you don't like the topic, but you like the video. So go ahead and give it that thumbs up. And then of course, share it and uh, subscribe if you're new and hit that bell because we will be covering this as it progresses and it's new every single day. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. So that's Martin. He's happy. And by the way, uh, you know, these two men, um, there's a lot of info on that and I'm not going to go into it. Okay. Here is an advertisement put out by the Jesuits at America Magazine. It's a Jesuit um, institution, Jesuit uh, periodical. And they put, Pope Francis allows blessings of couples in same-sex relationships December 18th. And then they put their little commentary on it and said, the Catholic Church is changing. Get the inside story. Sign up for our Jesuit magazine. Let me just say this. Look into my eyes. The Catholic Church does not change. Dogma and doctrine do not change. The Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Period. Jesus gave one gospel, one set of doctrine, one set of moral, ethical codes that are based on the Ten Commandments and extended by love God and love your neighbor. If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus says. He gave those of the apostles and through apostolic session in the Petrine ministry in Munis, that message is passed down for 2,000 years to this day. It doesn't change. Something wrong in AD 33 is wrong in 2033 or 23. Something evil in 50 AD is evil in 1150 or 1550, 1750, 1950. The sacraments, in their essence, do not change. The gospel does not change. Now, you might say, well, the church has to make clarifications. Absolutely, she does. 
You know, there was not in vitro fertilization or cloning in AD 33. But the principles of thou shall not kill and the principles of what is procreation, and doesn't have to do with glass test tubes, applies and the church can apply those principles to today. There were no blessings of irregular couples in AD 33, or in, in, in what's interesting is, is James Martin himself says this. Let me get the get it back up on here. It's not in this tweet, but another tweet. He says, you know, formerly I couldn't do it, now I can do it. And then the Jesuits say the Catholic Church is changing. That's not Catholic. It's not Catholic. And if you are a well-formed Catholic and you've read the Catechism and you've read the Bible, you know that that's not the case. That's why we're going to talk about having hope today and what to do next. And I'm going to give you, um, we're going to do the, we're going to take the black pill today, but then we're going to take the white pill, which is redemption, which is Jesus Christ, which is hope, which is apocalyptic, but which ultimately will save us. Now, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of people saying, yeah, but Taylor, if you actually read the document, it says you can bless individuals, but not the couples. You just read the document. I've read the document over and over. I've read the document probably more times than any of these people making this objection. And the document at least four times talks about the blessing of the same sex couples. Yeah, but Taylor, it doesn't mean the couples. It means an individual. Okay. Why does the document not say that? There's a lot of well-meaning people out there who don't want the document to say what the document says. And I get that. I wish we could just close our eyes and say, yeah, that's we, the document says whatever we want to say, but it doesn't say that. All right, what does the document say? Here's the document. I brought in my little red photoshopping here to help y'all out. Section three, blessings of couples in irregular situations and of couples of the same sex. Now, you tell me, is this about Blessing of individuals, or is this about blessing of couples? Yeah, but Taylor doesn't say unions. I understand it doesn't say unions, it says couples. Let's look at that again. Let's just read the text. Read the text. Paragraph 31. Within the horizon outlined here appears the possibility of blessing for couples. There's the word, couples. In irregular situations, and for couples of the same sex. It's allowing it. But it means individual. Okay, but they're a couple, right? Well, they're repentant. Okay, then why are they a couple? If two dudes have been married, like, for example, over here, right, these two, these two men here in the picture have been married, and I say married as in, the state, their state has given them a, a certificate of marriage, right? They have not repudiated that. They live in the same house. Martin is blessing them as a couple. Martin is following what is said here. You can bless the couple. They're saying, hey, we just want to get blessed. Give us that blessing. Couples. That's what's happening. I know we don't want it to say that. But that's what's going on. Let's look now at the bishops. Actually, before we look at the bishops, we're going to look at Vigano. We're going to look at Schneider. We're going to look at Bishop Strickland, the bishops of Malawi, the bishops of Zimbabwe, bishops all over the world are saying not only no, but H to the no. They're saying H to the no. Before we do that, I want to run a little Christmas joy here. Some things going on. First off. My new book on St. Nicholas. This is the real story of St. Nicholas. Continues to be number one bestseller for a couple of weeks here. You can get a copy. If you order it today, you probably could still get it in time for Christmas. Number one bestseller. If you ever want to know the true story of St. Nicholas, he's not the Coca-Cola red and white Santa Claus. He was a Catholic bishop. He was a priest. He had the powers of bilocation, exorcism. He was a miraculous man in, in his time. In the 300s, early 300s, he was the Padre Pio of that era. And I've retold it in a magical, wonderful Christmas story. It's called Nikolaus. Get it at Amazon. And if you want a signed copy, 
And I have to say this, if you go to Patreon, whoa, and you want to sign copy, what's going on with this zoom in? That's crazy. If you want to sign copy, you go to patreon.com, but you will not get it in time for Christmas. We're past that time. You will get a signed copy. It's a numbered and signed copy, but you will not get in time for Christmas. But I do encourage you go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall and you'll get a signed copy of Nicolaus. The other thing I want to talk about is I've always wanted a traditional Catholic wall calendar for my kitchen in my office that has the 1945 feasts and saints that goes along with the Father Lassant's Missal, and the 1962 Feast and Fast Days, which goes along with your other missiles, FSSP, SSPX, etc. I've always used two calendars. This is the new, my creative team have created the ultimate calendar. It's the 1945 and the 1962 annotated traditional wall calendar. It is epic. It is awesome. It is the end-all be-all of all traditional Catholic calendars. You need to order one. There's been a massive run on these calendars. Massive. If you order it today, you will not get it January 1st because there's too many orders. Right now, I just want to give you a heads up. You'll get it the second week of January if you order it today. So you're going to be a week off, but it's worth it. Get this traditional calendar. Get two. One in your office. I actually have multiple. I have like four. I got one in the kitchen for the family, one in the bathroom. So I see it when I'm getting ready, one at the office, and then another one at my other place where anytime I'm looking, what's the day, what's the ember day, what's the feast day, I have it all here. So the link is below, or you can go to store dot, store dot taylormarshall.com and order it there. All right, enough of that. That's your Christmas. Christmas gifts, highly encourage it. Let's look at the bishops now. All right, pretty exciting here. You know, a lot of people say if you ever disagree with Pope Francis, you're a schismatic, you're out of the church, you're sinning. And yet we have seen almost the entire Af African continent saying we, we're not doing this, H to the no. Of course, we got Bishop Strickland, who was canceled and removed from his diocese just, man, within the last couple months here scandalous. Bishop Strickland said, we will not incorporate this into the life of the church because we must simply say no. And it needs to be a united voice. So Bishop Strickland, as a bishop, is saying, let's unite as bishops. Let's go to Francis. And then we're going to say no as a united voice. Other people coming in here and rejecting the document are Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano. He says that the document is delirious and it is promulgated by servants of Satan and his most zealous allies. Dang! Servants of Satan. And remember, who wrote the document? Fiducia Supplicans. It was Cardinal Ferdinand. Fernandez, sorry, Cardinal Fer uh, Fernandez. He wrote, Heal Me With Your Mouth, The Art of Kissing. You know, he got that turtleneck and chain, turtleneck and rosary, the side, side, merce going there. This is the, uh, this is the author of our document that's being rejected. And Archbishop Vigano says... The delirious declaration fiducia supplicans recently published by the parody of the former office renamed to Castri definitely pierces the veil of hypocrisy and deception of the Bergoglian hierarchy, showing these false shepherds for what they really are, servants of Satan and his most zealous allies, beginning with the usurper who sits an abomination of desolation on the throne of Peter. So, dang... Archbishop Vigano is calling Francis a usurper, an abomination of desolation sitting on the throne of Peter, and those promoting this are servants of Satan. Archbishop Vigano is not holding back. Wow. We also got Bishop Athanasius Schneider and his diocese in Kazakhstan are also saying we will not implement this. And then Cardinal Mueller from Germany says... Given the unity of deeds and words in the Christian faith, one can only accept that it is 
that it is good to bless these unions, even in a pastoral way, if one believes that such unions are not objectively contrary to the laws of God. Now, I thought he made a stronger statement. Maybe I copied and pasted the wrong thing. But he's also come out against it. The bishops of Malawi came out December 19th. That was three days ago. And they said in, to, inv- to avoid confusion, we're not going to do this. The bishops of Zambia came out on the very next day as well and said in order to avoid pastoral confusions um, and listening to our cultural heritage, which does not accept same-sex marriages, the conference of bishops um, will also have to be taken under further reflection and not for implementation in Zambia. Rwanda, the same thing. Kazakhstan, same thing. In fact, even saying with the influence of Bishop Athanasius Schneider that it's a great deception. Evil. Strong words. In the United Kingdom, it wasn't the Conference of Bishops, but a group called the British Confraternity of Catholic Clergy, which I understand represents almost 100 priests, says, we believe that genuine charity always follows true doctrine and that such blessings would work against the legitimate care a priest owes to his flock. With honest parousia and from our own experience as pastors, we conclude that such blessings are pastorally and practically inadmissible. Of course, there's other solitary voices. It's worth noticing also that the Society of St. Pius X released a statement. They will also not be implementing the document from the Vatican asking for the blessing of irregular union, irregular couples, or same-sex couples. This is remarkable because what we're seeing is not just one bishop like Bishop Strickland or Viganum. We're seeing entire Episcopal conferences, groups of bishops, to the face of the Pope, Galatians 2, Paul resisted the Cephas to his face. We will not be implementing what you have told us to do. That is recognize and resist. That is the principle of we're recognizing you, but we are resisting this. Either just by saying we're not going to implement it, thanks, but no thanks, or going as far as Vigano and saying, these are the servants of Satan, you usurper. Wowzers. All penned by Cardinal Fernandez. There it is. Now, I want to bring you some Christmas hope. Talk to a lot of friends, family members, and they're like, this was not what we wanted in our Christmas stocking in 2023. Not me either. But I want to assure you that myself personally, this does not affect my belief in Jesus Christ, my belief in the one holy Catholic and apostolic and Roman church. It does not affect my belief in the Eucharist or the seven sacraments, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the communion of saints, even the papacy. I believe with all my heart the same I believed a week ago or a year ago. And I want to encourage all of you to take the same posture of faith, trust, hope, love of God and love of neighbor, which is what the Christmas time is all about. That being said, I want you to consider, again, I'm a dad on a webcam. I want everyone watching to hear me say very carefully, I have zero authority over your life. I am a nobody. I'm a layman. I'm a dad. I've written some books. I have degrees. That's it. But I want to encourage you to do something. We're in a war. We're in a spiritual war. And when you're in a spiritual war and things get really rough, you have to re-examine your strategy and you have to re-examine how not only you're going to survive and you're going to win. I believe we're at a crossroads at the end of 2023 
where you have to ask yourself, is my level of faith as a Catholic where I want it to be? Am I using the shield of faith to protect myself? And do I have the spiritual weapons to not only defend myself and my family or not? And you've heard me say maybe a thousand times, pray the rosary every day you're not on the team. Some people find that offensive. Here's what I'm really saying in 2023. Do you need a bigger and better weapon? Do you need better, stronger, sharper tools? The answer is yes, yes, yes. If anything, 2023 has taught you that the Vatican, the Pope, the Cardinals, your local diocesan bishop, even your own pastor, and maybe you're blessed to have excellent pastoral leadership, but you're in a position right now to know that you really need to prepare yourself to endure during a difficult time. And this is why I'm going to make the following recommendations to you. You must pray every day. You must pray the rosary every single day. Dads listening to me, pray five decades of the rosary every day with your wife and your kids. Our family usually does it after dinner, before bed. Works out great. Some of the kids fall asleep during it. No problem. Don't worry about it. Are you a member of a traditional Catholic parish and community? The answer is no. I would, I would humbly suggest to you, I would humbly ask you, how are you going to survive if you don't have the fellowship and the friendship of other men and women and families? You need that. You need that. And this is why you hear me also recommend find a traditional Latin mass parish. Find a, a beautiful Byzantine divine liturgy. I do believe that when your kids watch people receive communion in the hands over and over and over hundreds of times from the time they're baptized till 18, I think it negatively affects their faith. That's my opinion. Again, this is just a layman today on YouTube giving his opinion and his recommendations. Do you pray the Angelus every day? Do you pray over your meals in public, no matter where you're at, on an airplane, at a restaurant, at work? Do you make the sign of the cross? Do you go to confession every two to four weeks? Do you avoid mortal sin? Do you root out impurity and pornography? Do you do fasting and prayer? Like this is the moment to realize that no one or likely no one is going to come along and suddenly just make everything better. So what that means is Jesus Christ in his church through his apostles have given us all of these means of grace. Isn't it about time that we start using them. And when you use them, you will have more grace, which means you'll have more faith and more hope and more charity. You also have more of the other virtues, prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance. You'll have joy. You'll have peace. It's one thing to go on Twitter, or Facebook and complain and see all, all of this. It's another thing entirely to say, you know what? 2023, everybody get in the van. We're going to that traditional Latin mass. See what that's all about. Are you going to do it or not do it? If you were in a major war and I said, hey, you want a weapon? You're like, yeah, we're in war. You want 22 long rifle or AR-10? What do you want? Would you really say, I just want the 22? Or I want the pellet rifle? The, I want the, I'll tell you what, I'll give you an AR-10 or you get the Red Rider BB gun. You know, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. Are you ready for battle? And you're like, you know what? I'm cool. I'm going to go with Red Rider BB gun. I'm going to be like, what? What? I'm encouraging y'all all today to go for bazooka. Go for 
Apache helicopter. 2024 Red Ryder BB gun with Ralphie ain't going to cut it. You got to go to the next level. You need to read your entire Bible. Genesis to Apocalypse. I got ways to help you. Go to NSTI.com. Go to NSTI.com. I got courses on Latin math. You want to learn about Latin math? How to go to the Latin math? I got a whole course on that. Go to NSTI.com. Lots of people have been signing up this December. They want to get serious about January 2024 and beyond. You want to read the whole Bible in a year? I got a course for you to do that. You want to learn about how the Latin Mass, how it was formed, how to attend it? I got a course for that. Go to NSTI.com. But this is where you make the decision for yourself and for your family. As I talk about in Infiltration, when they rebuilt Jerusalem, they had the building tools in their hands, the trowels, right? The bricks, all this stuff to build. In one hand, they were building, and in the other hand, they were holding spears and bows and weapons because they had to both build, they had to rebuild Jerusalem, and they had to defend themselves from people who were coming and trying to attack them while they were building. That's the last chapter of my book, Infiltration. Rebuild, but also be on the defense and the offense. And that's what I'm saying. And here's the beautiful thing about it. It's free. It costs you zero dollars. To pray the rosary is free. To go to mass, traditional Latin mass is free. To go to confession is free. To pray the Angelus three times a day, that's free too. You want to read the whole Bible? I mean, yeah, you can take my course. Or you can just do it for free. Everything that we're talking about today doesn't cost anything. God's grace, God's mercy, God's sacraments, that's all free. It's a free gift. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Evangelicals love that verse. It's true. But then Jesus was even more merciful, more generous, and he gave us all of these means of grace and, and sacraments and saints and all these things, and they're all still there. Just because you have Francis and a bunch of Jesuits shaking on a deal thousands of miles from your house does not change the fact that you can be better equipped. If you agree with that, give that, give that thumbs up, like it. I'm gonna do some comments and questions before I do the comments and questions, in case you join late, I'm also encouraging everybody, cool Christmas gift, my new book on St. Nicholas. And then if you need a traditional calendar to know all the traditional saints, fast days, you know, believe it or not, traditionally, for example, in 1945, Lent ends on Holy Saturday at noon. In 1962, Lent ends Holy Saturday at midnight. That's a difference, 12-hour difference. Those kind of things are all noted on my new NSTI traditional Catholic calendar. You need to get that calendar. Links are in below. Let's do some questions. Let's go. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell. Like the video. Let's do it. Into your comments and into your questions. Here's a good one here from Lijo or Lijo. I'm just a poor college student, and going to TLM costs me a lot of money to travel from where I live, so I attend a very traditional Novus Ordos, but it's very, very trad. Again, do your best, right? I'm not saying everyone has a private jet and they can hop over to a TLM whenever they want. I realize life is life, and there are difficult things. I'm just saying, if there's the traditional Latin Mass and it's 33 minutes from you, let's make that investment right? If you have the means, if you have the vehicle, if you can do it, now is the time to just say, all right, I'm going to take the challenge. This guy on YouTube named Marshall, he says, go to the Latin mass four times. Don't give up. Just try it four times. So I'm just going to go four times and just see what happens. Just try it. What do you got to lose? If your wife or your kids say, I don't know, Dad, I don't want to go to this thing. Just say, you know what? We're going to go four times. And let's see what happens. I don't want to pray the rosary every night. I want to watch TV. I want to play video games. Well, that's not happening anymore. We're going to pray the rosary every night. 
get your beads, come into the family room, light some candles, maybe even read a little Bible. We're going to pray the rosary. But dad, that's just how things are now. We live in a world where we need this. We got to do it. All right. Thanks for your, your question and your comment. Appreciate that. Sharon, the three days of darkness is coming. Yeah, I believe in the three days of darkness. Could come. Could be any moment now or it could be 100 years from now. I really want us to, to be faithful to what God has given us now. If you don't use what he gave you now, he may take it away. It's kind of the thing with the traditional Latin Mass. You got the traditional Mass, you don't want it, well, maybe he'll just take it away. So yes, there very much could be divine intervention. I think there will be, but we can't presume on the divine intervention. We have to be faithful to what God has given us now. Angel says, Angel Among Us says, our bishop didn't speak bad about our Pope. He just explained to us what he said. Okay. You have to ask yourself, though, um, do you, should Catholic priests be blessing irregular couples? I understand a very sinful person. Let's take myself. I don't know. I go and I say, uh, Father, can I get a blessing? I'm really struggling. I need a blessing. He's, well, I don't know. Have you been to confession in the past three weeks? I don't know if I can give you. That's not Catholic. A priest, anyone who comes to the priest and says, you know, Father, I'm a, I'm struggling. I live in, you know, drugs, whatever, list everything out. You know, can I have a blessing? Priests can, can bless him and pray for him. Absolutely. The problem is the word couples. Because when you come together as a couple, you're not just saying I as a person who am struggling. You're saying we as a couple want a blessing. So now the blessing is oriented towards the coupleness. And the coupleness is objectively sinful, especially when the coupleness, let's see here, when the coupleness is like living in a state of secular state marriage, et cetera. And that's what's being blessed. It's no longer, like you can see here, they're holding hands as a couple receiving a blessing. Put on a couple tuxedos and you got more confusion. I know the document says it's not marriage and that's good. That's good, but it's the coupleness. That's the prop. That's the theological problem. Yeah, but tell you what, the document doesn't say couples. The document says couples. Boom shakalaka. Boom goes dynamite. Says couples. I don't want to hear any more people in the world saying the document doesn't say couples when the document does say couples of the same sex and same sex couples. It's just there, straight up. There it is. I want to hear from anyone whether you agree with what I'm saying in that. Do you just want the Red Rider BB gun or do you want to upgrade this year? I'd love to hear that. Claire says it's an assault on matrimony. And I think it's more than that. I think it's an assault on the priesthood because anyone who refuses to do this is going to be marked and noted. It provides a way for there to be a purge, just like they purged Bishop Strickland. And it's going to be just like the cake baking. You know, that person didn't bake our cake, so he has to be sued. He has to be punished. That priest did not do the blessing. Therefore, he has to be sued. He has to be punished. You know how vulnerable Catholic priests are feeling right now because of this? All right, back into your comments and your questions. I told this to my friends, says Garlic Bread, and they tried to pope explain me. You know, I, I'm actually moving away from the word Pope splaining. I think we should say Francis splaining because it just clarifies that the root of the problem is with Francis Bergoglio. That's the problem right there, right? So I'm, uh, I, I'm encouraging people to say that. Back into your comments and into your question. Trunter Tales says, read Fiducia Supplicans yourself. Stop depending on priests to give you their subjective interpretation. You can read it. It's not the Middle Ages. I like that, Trantor. Y'all go and read it. It's on the Vatican website. You know, you don't need your pastor, your priest, 
or someone on YouTube to tell you, well, what it really says is actually really this. Why don't you just go and read it? And you'll see what it says. Just like I've gone and read it and I've seen what it says. Don't trust me. Trust your own eyes. Go read it. In the lion's den says the Holy Rosary is the most powerful weapon we have. And I would agree with that. But our most powerful thing is the holy sacrifice of the mass. Because it is the propitiatory sacrifice once and for all of Jesus Christ to the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. That is the holy sacrifice of the Mass because it is the divine prayer between the divine persons of the Most Holy Trinity. It's the perfect prayer. We enter into that. We are entering into perfect sacrifice, perfect intercession. Now, away from the sacramental economy, the Rosary is the most powerful prayer because it's the Our Father, the Hail Mary, which comes from Luke's Gospel, the Glory Be. And it's meditating on the mysteries of the life of Christ, which is our salvation. So it's very powerful. So yes, pray the rosary every day or you're not on the team. By the way, if you want to pray the rosary, if you don't know how to pray the rosary, I have many free videos here on YouTube. Just uh, search my name in YouTube, Taylor Marshall Rosary. I explain how you do every single bead. I explain the prayers. If you want to pray it in Latin, I have it all in Latin where I give you the words very slowly. It's all there. I also have a book called Rosary in 50 Pages. You can get it on Amazon. I'll also send it to you via Patreon. There it is right there. Boom. I'll send you a rosary as well. But that book right there, Rosary in 50 Pages, in detail tells you how to pray the rosary. It's a short little book. Right? My whole goal with that book is just to get people understanding what the rosary is and how to pray it. Um, Leslie says, we all need to armor up, take up our rosaries, unite with the saints, fight, fight, fight. I agree. And again, remember, as lay people, you and me, we can't, we can't go and just depose cardinals or popes or something like that. But we can storm heaven with what we have. And today, if you're feeling discouraged, I'm telling you there's a free upgrade to your arsenal. Cost you nothing. Upgrade your arsenal from the Red Rider BB gun to the rocket launcher, to the bazooka, to the AR-10, to the Apache helicopter. There's some grandmothers watching this right now who are straight up. They don't have the Red Rider BB gun. These grandmothers are prayer warriors, and they are flying around in black hawks spiritually. Demons and devils are afraid of these praying grandmothers with their beads who are clocking in, you know, 30 decades a day and offering up their arthritis and their pain, everything they have for the papacy, for the Vatican, for their families, for the church, for their pastors, for the priests. You can be one of those people. You got to upgrade. You got to go deeper. You got to get into tradition. That's where all the life is, all the nutrients. You got to tap into the root tradition. Get that, get those nutrients flow into you and your family. That's why I say go to the traditional Latin mass, pray your rosary, go to confession. It's not hard. This is not rocket science. It's just called Catholic 101. Dean says, so if I have four girlf girlfriends, I should be able to get a blessing too, right? Tell me why not. I mean, I made that comparison in my previous video. I said, what if you have a pimp and a prostitute? And they're like, we want a couple's blessing. It's an irregular sexual relationship. It technically qualifies under the document. That's wrong. If a pimp says, man, I'm really, I need, father, I need a blessing, I'm really struggling. Or if a prostitute says that, okay, but if a pimp and a prostitute come together as a couple and are holding hands and the priest gives them a blessing as a couple, that's a problem, theological problem. A seven-year-old can understand this. Uh, super chat here from the UK. Or no, maybe it's not the UK. It's in Euros. How can Fran how Francis can be accused of apostasy by canon law? 
Well, the first C is judged by no one. That's a canonical truth, the theological and canonical truth. But St. Robert Bellarmine, actually it's in this book, Tome 2, gives a process of admonition and a process of finding a pope to be a manifest heretic. And if a manifest heretic declared null and void. So it's very complicated. It's not, it's one Catholic saint who's a doctor of the church explaining what it would look like, but the Catholic church has never experienced that in 2000 years and hence the problem. I can't get here and tell you how to untie this knot. All I can tell you is we are in battle, bullets are flying over our head, we're in the foxholes and I'm saying, let's upgrade what we got. Let's take it to the next level. Fathers, take it to the next level. Pastors of parishes, be bold, take it to the next level. That's a business relationship, not a loving one. Yeah, yeah. If you have a pimp and a prostitute who come for a couple's blessing, um, it's a business relationship. But the girl might say it's loving. He might say it's loving. It's a loving business relationship. And you also have to say, if you have people in a regular, let's say you have a man and his mistress, and they come for a couple's blessing, they, the man and the mistress might say, we're madly in love with one another. That's the problem, right? We have to go by not what people feel warm and fuzzies. You know, I'm just in love with this person. So magical. No, we go by objective reality. If two people want to have sexual intercourse, they must be validly married, period. End of story. You cannot regularize or bless any other sexual relationship than that of holy matrimony, which is between a man and a woman, like Adam and Eve, as God instituted it in Genesis opening chapters. Very basic. Very basic. Kevin Pierce says, a good and well-known popular priest said to my horror, and I was absolutely shocked to his response. He said, the document was excellent and a win for conservatives. How would you respond? I would respond by, that's just a straight up lie. That blessing of couples that are based on the objective principle of sinful sexual relationships is misleading. It's misleading to the church, to the world, and it's misleading to the couple in question. I mean, one of the most shocking things, I didn't mention it, but it was Bishop Barron. Bishop Barron came out approving of it. The United States Conference of Bishops said, Bishop Barron gives the imprimatur thumbs up. It's disappointing. It's disappointing. It's encouraging to see so many African bishops resisting. It's disappointing to see that the only bishop in America that I've seen so far publicly come out is Bishop Strickland, and they've already canceled him. They already, as my friend says, ran him out on a rail. Bellarmite, thoughts on sede privationism. Uh, I've read, read quite a bit about it. I talk about it in my book, Infiltration. Um, so if you want some of my thoughts, you can read about it there. Um, I have read the entire Casa Chiacum thesis by Gerard de Laurier. I find it interesting. I'm not 100% convinced by it. Uh, I do find his distinction between material and formal uh, with regard to the moonness of the papacy interesting. There might be something there. Um, but it's a very complicated situation. I think we need more magisterial guidance on it. But definitely something that I've explored, thought about, looked into. Thanks for that comment question. Another super chat coming in. This reminds me of the Novus Ordo, nothing wrong in and of itself, but there is room to abuse it. We can pray for the Pope during the stream. Um, 
No, I think it's different. I think it's different. Um, to say there's nothing wrong with the document, but it can be abused is incorrect. There is something wrong with the document. That's it right there. There's something wrong with the document. It's not a neutral doc. And it's true. It has m mountains of, of weaponized ambiguity in it so that it can be abused. Absolutely. It's written in a way that there's ambiguity so that it can be abused. Why? Because this dude wrote it. Okay. Turtleneck and chain wrote it. That's the problem. But again, I don't think it's a uh, good in itself, nothing wrong with it. It's going to be abused. No, the statement itself is fundamentally not good. Thank you for the live uh, the super chat. Appreciate it. And also, I want to say, you know, there was a time, there was a Pope, look him up, Pope Honorius I, 600s. He was not forthcoming on the orthodoxy regarding the volition, the wills of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's Catholic teaching that Christ as a divine person, as a divine will, and assuming the human nature, he has a human will, and that they are perfectly in sync. Pope Honorius Use the language of one or two. It's kind of flimsy, flippy floppy, no conviction. And because of that, his successor, a Pope Leo, affirmed his being anathema, and an ecumenical council affirmed Honorius as being anathema. You can have popes who are anathema. Grace, Padre Pio would not tolerate this. Yeah, that goes without saying. Padre Pio would definitely not support this. I mean, yeah, you read the biography of Padre Pio, and he was very forthcoming. Even with women who were dressed inappropriately coming to confession, he would even talk about that. So there's just no way Padre Pio would um, would engage in the in the implementation of these blessings in fiducia the document xm says could you please bring father jenkins sspv from what catholics believe podcast on your show yeah i think about it um i have corresponded with him and and uh he's very kind Domenico, what can the laity do in the wake of this scandalous document how can we fight besides prayer your most powerful fight is with prayer. If you take nothing else home from today's podcast, your most powerful fight is your prayer today. I don't want you to think activism or anything like that is somehow going to do more than you circling around on your rosary or going to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. That is the tip top. Prayer. Prayer. Like I said, there's some grandmothers out there watching who are, you know, are, are Black Hawk operatives, Navy SEALs out there because of their humility and their prayers. Now, on the, act, on the activation, what can you do? You know, if it's appropriate, you could say to your priest and your bishop, um, if this is, are you going to do this or not? And if you are, I'm withholding all of my donations and support according to my conscience just to let people know not that that's going to really move the needle too much but it might be worth saying if it's appropriate and you should do it in a loving charitable way don't shake your fist don't be rude but just say you know I, there's this new confusing document what do you, are you going to do the blessings or not do the blessings well i think it's fabulous it's just you know you know it's just this you know it's just Wow, the Catholic Church, it's, the Catholic Church is changing and it's just awesome. We say, well, you know, thanks for telling me that. Uh, I'm not going to be giving my, my contribution this year to the parish or the diocese. Let's so let them know. Again, I, I honestly would rather you pray 30 rosaries. That's going to do a lot more in the kingdom of heaven 
than that. But you know what? You could do both. Why not both? I happen to know my pa- my pastor is not doing it. So I don't have to have that conversation. I think it's worth noting, you know, is your pastor going to do it or not? If your pastor's like, yeah, baby, we're doing it, you know? Cue the Elton John jams, you know? Then maybe that is your sign from God. Hey, we need to go find that traditional parish. And and by the way, some of you are people of means. You can work anywhere you want. Just move. Move to a different part of the country. I've been saying that for years. I've partnered up with Real Estate for Life, realestateforlife.org. These are people that agree with our values. You go to realestateforlife.org and say, hey, I want to move to this part of the country. I want to move to Texas. Let's go with Taylor Marshall. Let's go to Texas. Realestateforlife.org will help you sell your house, help you move to a different area, wherever you want to go. Um, That's an option. By the way, if you do use realestateforlife.org, tell them you heard about it on Dr. Taylor Marshall's show. That's a real option as well. You just move. You say, you know what? We want a Catholic school for our kids. We're going to have to move. Or you go to your boss. Hey, can I go to this different location in the country? I want to move. Or I want to go to a different country, different state, different county. Find a traditional parish, traditional school. That way, you know, your wife is hanging out with, with women who have the same beliefs. And you're hanging out with guys, you know, like I do every week. I got a great men's group, Bible study. We read the Dewey Rames, we smoke cigars, we talk about Catholicism. It's awesome. You need that. If you have to move, do it. Realestateforlife.org, highly, highly recommend. I trust them. That's where I send people to get it done. Brick says, Taylor, thanks for Nicolaus. Had a lot of people interested in it during my book giveaway. Thank you, Brick. You gave away the book? That's awesome. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Please write a review. If you've, if you've all already read my new book, Nicolaus, please leave a review over at Amazon. I really appreciate it. I read every single one of them. Thank you, Brick. That's very cool of you. Oh, and by the way, uh, Joy, my family, and I put out on YouTube this morning a Christmas card. If you'd like to see the Marshall video Christmas card, you can go on my YouTube channel, Dr. Taylor Marshall. And please watch that uh, greeting from all of us. And I think you'll have a good little laugh, a good chuckle. So check out our Christmas card, Taylor Marshall on YouTube. Uh, Yes, the SSPX has issued an official statement. They are not implementing the blessings. Yep. Um, The Ukrainian Catholic Church has put out a statement saying this only applies to the Latin right. I did not know that. If that's true, well, they got their loophole. That's cool. Is Nicolaus a prequel and Sword of Serpent series or what? Yes, Nicolaus is the prequel to my book, Sword and Serpent. It actually kind of goes at the same time as the opening of my book, Sword and Serpent, which is about St. George, Constantine, and St. Christopher. So if you read Nicolaus and you've read Sword and Serpent, you'll realize that there's this overlap and there's actually kind of in and out um, activity that goes with the original book. So you don't have to have read Sword and Serpent, but if you've read Sword and Serpent, you're going to have a lot of smiles and a lot of happiness as you read the new book, Nicolaus, because the two books definitely are connected in the same Sword and Serpent universe. Patricia says, I saw the Christmas card, beautiful thing, family. Thank you so much, Patricia. Patricia, I'm very blessed. I appreciate that. Let me take a couple more comments and questions from all you guys. Um, Robert says, you know, I just want to deal with this objection because it's, it's worth discussing. He says, Francis is Pope, obey and respect. Remember, all authority, even popes, popes are flawed. Peter was the first pope. He was flawed. Remember, he told Jesus, hey, you don't want to go to Jerusalem and die. And what did Jesus say? Get by me, Satan. That's what he said to Peter. Paul in Galatians, he says, you know, when I, when I was with Peter, when he was in Antioch, I had to resist him to his face because he was not eating with the Gentiles. He was not living in accord of the gospel where Jew and Gentile are both equally redeemed in Jesus Christ through baptism. I had to resist him to his face. 
Just because a pope says something doesn't mean it has to be obeyed. If the pope were to decree, I want every adult male over the age of 30 to dye his hair pink in order to receive communion, you could disobey that. You know, I could, I'd love to see the Francis Pointer saying, you have to do this thing, right? It's, it's feasible that a Pope could do that. You, you would not have to obey that. If a Pope had a mistress and said, you must sleep with me tonight, the mistress is not, she can't say, well, he's the Pope, so I have to do this thing. See, obedience has limits. You are to honor and obey your father and mother. Wives are to submit and obey to their husbands. It's in the Bible. Their husbands tell them to do something sinful or wrong. They don't do it. That's just common sense, right? So, you know, just to throw out there, he's the Pope, obey and respect. I mean, I think everybody sees the flaws in that. Especially if he's telling you his obedience is going to require you to compromise your obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a problem. Maria Nevado, your books are great. Thanks so much. Awesome books. We listen to them. Read by Mr. Kennedy Hall. Yes, Kennedy has narrated Sword and Serpent, Tenth Region of the Night, and Storm of Fire and Blood. And Kennedy has said he's going to be narrating Nikolaus. He's just, he's just had a baby, as you know, so pray for him and his wife. He's super busy right now, so he can't, can't get it out. All right. Here we go. Uh, Fandom Music asks, is blessing same-sex couple as approved by Father Brocolio and formally approving same-sex marriage? What is your opinion Dr. Taylor, thank you. So the document, let's be very clear. The document explicitly states that this is not blessing marriage or unions. 100%, if you read the whole document, to its credit, it specifically states this is not blessing unions, like civil unions, or marriages. Okay? It says that, and that is very good. And I praise it, and I give it the applause for saying that. That being said, you are having people who are in civil unions and state marriages who are coming forward to get the blessing as a couple, and the document does not prohibit that. And that's why you see James Martin doing exactly that. He's boasting about it and posting pictures about it. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Are you going to upgrade? Red Rider B beginning an upgrade to Bazooka, Lapua, AR-15, AR-10. Where are you going to take it? Are you going to be a Maccabean warrior? Be the Maccabee. Upgrade your Catholicism. Take it to the next level. I will be doing a webinar at the beginning of the year to kind of talk about how you can do that. So stay tuned for that. But today you're just hearing it. There is not in the current hierarchy of the church a mechanism that is going to reverse and heal and fix everything right now. So the very best thing we can do is double down on what it means to be a Catholic. Go to confession, find the traditional mass, pray your rosary, Get the Baltimore Catechism. Get the Tridentine Catechism. Read it. Learn it. Memorize it. Teach your kids. That's what we got to do. All right, let's pray. Hail Mary. Oremus. Nomini Patris et Fidi, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et et ora mortis nostre. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right. If you want to get 
Today probably is the last day to get it in time for Christmas. Get a copy of my book, Nikolaus. The link is below this in YouTube in the show notes. Everyone, I think, really does need to get a wall calendar that's traditional. This is, I think, the best one. Pre-1955, you get the 1945 and the 1962 options, all with notation. Very clear. Oh, I forgot to mention, this calendar comes in two versions. General, which goes month to month. So like Easter will have an Easter image. You know, fall will have, you know, November will have Holy Souls image. That's one version. And the other version is every single month on the top of the calendar has a Marian image. So there's the, the normal version and the Virgin Mary version. Why not get both? If you do buy two or more calendars, we did discount it to help everybody out. So I would get both the general and the Marian or whatever you want to do. If you want just many of the Marian, you can do that as well. So to get that, you go to store.taylormarshall.com. The link is below. All right. You'll probably see me again before Christmas, but I do want to say happy Advent, Merry Christmas, and remember our Lord Jesus Christ is you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. Upgrade. Red Rider BB gun. Trade it in. Upgrade. God bless.